Really? Matthew Stafford? Really? Now, Matthew Stafford is no scrub. Matthew Stafford is one of the best quarterbacks, if healthy, in the league. We'll talk about that in a little bit during this video. Uh, I think, you know, just looking at the positives of this trade, now for those who do not know, we'll just real quick, uh, Matthew Stafford was officially traded to the LA Rams. Uh, the Detroit Lions got Jared Goff in exchange for that. Now, there's more that I didn't discuss that I will talk about, but really? Really, Les Need? Matthew Stafford. This shit just... Okay, all right. Let's just talk about the positives. Let's get right back on track and talk about the positives. Well, if you're looking at it from the Rams' perspective, you're, you know, just from a fanatic perspective, you're looking at the positives. You're getting Matthew Stafford. You're getting one of the you know strongest arms in the league. You're getting a guy that has a lot of NFL experience. You're talking about a guy that's had a lot of success in the league. You know, and... The fact of the matter is, is that if he was on a better football team, who knows, Matthew Stafford could have been a top five quarterback in this league. Matthew Stafford's a guy that's 32 years of age, you know, in, in, in quarterback years. That's like, that's being, tw that's 25 years of age, you know, uh, that's the equivalent of being 25, at least 25 years of age as a running back in the league. So obviously 32 years of age in today's NFL, that's extremely young still for a quarterback. That's still a quarterback's prime. And Matthew Stafford is in his prime. I don't think he can go up. I think that for what we've seen, this is his prime. And then you look at all the weapons that he has around. I mean, you look at Robert Woods and Tyler Higby. And uh, uh, you look at uh, Robert Woods and, and just and so many other playmakers, Van Jefferson, just so many other play, playmakers on that Rams offense. You, know, you have a pretty good offensive line. You got a pretty good running game with Daryl Henderson and Cam Akers in the backfield. They have weapons. They, they definitely have the weapons for Matthew Stafford. They have the riches there, and for the first time since he had Calvin Johnson on, for the first time since, um, since he had Calvin Johnson, he has a legitimate. Well, I'm not gonna say since Calvin Johnson, because of course, you know, you look at some of the other weapons that he's uh, that he's inherited over the years. He's had some weapons, but never this amount, never this, in just an enrichment of weapons that Matthew Stafford has. Had. So you gotta look at it from a positive standpoint. The Rams are still clearly in win mode, uh, win, win now mode. Uh, they pretty much. Confirm that with when when they traded for Jalen Ramsey for a couple of first round picks. Hell, they tried to do it in 2018 when they traded the first round pick for Brandon Cooks, and then they traded uh, in 2019 uh, second and third round picks to the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, it was uh, uh, the, the the Rams for the last really three to four years. They have been they have been in this win now uh, mode mentality. The Rams want a Super Bowl, and they believe that their window they still have a really big window in order for them to achieve it. Um, so that's some of the positives that you have a quarterback that's better than than than, uh, than your number one overall draft pick or your former number one overall draft pick in Jared Goff. You know Jared Goff had a good seat. You know he had a you know he had a in twenty seventeen had a eh, had a rocky start. Twenty eighteen the his second year had a great start. Got the team to get helped the team get to the Super Bowl. Twenty nineteen went backwards. Twenty twenty was a little was better than what it, than what he was in twenty nineteen. But ultimately, didn't ultimately didn't get the team uh, far enough, losing in the divisional round to the uh, Green Bay Packers. And if you look at what he did in that wild card round, wasn't really good. Now we can't. Now he had a thumb injury, and you know if he was healthy, you know just how good would Jared Goff be in the playoffs? Is something that we'll honestly never know. Um, but obviously, the Rams organization, less need, they did not feel comfortable with, or he did not feel comfortable with Jared Goff enough. He just didn't feel comfortable. I'm guessing Sean McVay. Definitely had some say in the matter too, because again, that was his guy, uh, Sean McVay. That that's his guy. So um, obviously, he didn't feel really comfortable with uh, Jared Goff, and and of course, I think the coach definitely had some say in the matter. But at the same time, you get a 32 year old quarterback that's had a a horrible injury is a history. A horrible in injury history. A guy that's had multiple season ND injuries, so many minor injuries, especially on his throwing shoulder. He's had, he's had, you're talking about a guy that's dealt with a lot of serious fucking injuries in his career. And even though he's 32 years of age at the quarterback position, you have to factor in those injuries, um, especially if you're an NFL football player, that can reduce the amount of years that you can play in this league. And a there were better options. Deshaun Watson was available. Now, I don't know if they tried to make a deal with Deshaun Watson or maybe Deshaun Watson just didn't fit the system. 
But would you rather have a 32-year-old uh, Matthew Stafford that's dealt with multiple <clears throat> season-ending injuries, or would you get a quarterback that's that's literally entering the pro his prime of his career that is a legitimate top five quarterback in the league right now that's in his that's what what 20 20 that's around what 25 24 25 years of age in Deshaun Watson you could have trade you you you're telling me that you traded two first round picks and a, and I think what a, and what a, a, a third round pick a, a, a second and a third round pick for Matthew Stafford, but you couldn't try to get that same you could you couldn't try to get the same with Deshaun Watson. What the fuck are we doing? What what is Lesney doing? Yes, you get an upgrade from Jared Goff, but at the same time, the Lions won this damn trade. The Lions won this damn trade. Yes, the Lions have to pay for Jared Goff's contract. I understand that. They have to pay for his contract, and the Lions will not go anywhere with Jared Goff. But here's the good thing of what the Lions have. They have draft capital. You gave them additional draft capital, and not just that, but you pile on second and third round picks to add to it. It's like, yes, again, the, the Rams, Les Need, did a great job of piling on that shitty contract they gave with Jared Goff onto the Lions, but at the same time, you trade away your future. And you and they've done it over the last three years. They did it with trying to trade up for Brandon Cooks while literally trading him the next year, uh, trading him literally the next year, which is in, which is which is crazy to me. Literally trading him, I think either a year or two later. Then you go ahead and trade a second and, and some third round picks to the Falcons. I forgot who they got with those picks, but that you trade those picks away. Then you trade two first round picks for Jalen Ramsey. Then you trade another two first round picks for Matthew Stafford. You're not going to have a first round pick until 2024. And then when dealing with not with Aaron Donald's contract and Jalen Ramsey's contract, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, and now you're dealing with Matthew. Now you have to add on Matthew Stafford's contract. You have to pay the $43 million. And here's another thing. Matthew Stafford, I believe, and I could be wrong about this, Matthew Stafford has two years left on his contract. And by the, and by the time his contract is up, at, when he's around, what, 34, 35 years of age, is he going to be worth that? Is he going to be worth two first-round picks? Is he going to be worth two years of your future? I understand that the Rams are in this win now mentality, but at the same time, what the fuck were you thinking? And if anything, if you were going to trade two first round picks, you could have traded to the to the to the Texans with that dysfunctional organization that's desperate of trying to find their future because the shot Watson wants to be out of there. You could have traded two first round picks and all that additional draft capital to them, and I and they gladly would have took it. Oh my goodness gracious! Now, if the Texans, if we, if, if if there's an article come out and the Texans just denied it, then you know what? I can be a little. I I can definitely understand why the Rams tried to do it because they were desperate. The Rams had a, have a window. They believe they have a Super Bowl window, and they were desperate. Would it be still a smart move for them to trade away all their future picks? No, but at the same time, you have a shitty contract that's good. That's definitely going to affect your team. I I get it. If we find out that the Texans denied uh, Matthew uh, denied getting Jared Goff, I completely understand and get it. The Texans at this point has a lot of leverage. They can end up getting three first round picks and even more additional draft capital um, for Deshaun Watson. He's that damn good of a quarterback. But if we find out that the Rams didn't even try, they never even thought of the idea of trading for Deshaun Watson, and they thought that was the guy, Les Snead thought that was the guy, Matthew Stafford was that guy, then Les Snead's a fucking ass. Then Les Snead is a dumbass. Because, yes, even though you're probably going to get two years out of Matthew Stafford, and the key word of this is probably going to get two years out of it, you're trading away 
once again your future. You're not going to have a draft pick. You're not going to have a 2024 first round pick. You're not going to have any of it. And now piling on those another huge contract with the amount of other players, you're killing your cap space. You're killing your team when it comes to cap space. Not to mention that you have to pay $22 million of dead cap to Jared Goff. This year. It, it just, it just, oh, it, it just mind, it, it's just unbelievable to me how less need in this Rams organization can continue to just give away their future. And we have to, and again, we have to mention, yes, Matthew Stafford is a great quarterback. We get it. We understand it. And we and I will give the Rams that plus. But at the same time, you're dealing with the uh, you're dealing with the quarterback that's had multiple season ending injuries. He's had he's had so many injuries during his career playing with that shitty shitty organization of the Detroit Lions that at the same time you just don't know how much he has left in the damn tank. You just don't know. He can end up he can end up being a little bit worse than Jared Goff, or maybe be or probably be the same as Jared Goff. If you're doing this, you're trying you're trying to get a, a guy that's going to be in that top five. That's top five fucking money you trade for. If you're going to trade all that additional draft capital, you're getting a guy that should be at least a top five guy. Not top 10 or top 15. You're getting a guy that's top five, that's transcendent, that will guy that will get this organization over the top and get them a, a Super Bowl championship. But even if that's worth it, even if the, the even if the Rams get a Super Bowl in the next couple of years, what will happen of the of the next two to three to four years? I don't know. Again, we'll see how this move plays out in the future. But for the Detroit Lions, they won this. Even though you're dealing with Jared Goff's shitty contract, doesn't really shitty contract, and Jared Goff will not get that team anywhere. You have so much draft capital that you can literally prepare for the that you're literally could if you if you play the cards right, the Detroit Lions in probably in three years, two to three years, we're talking about an organization that could definitely benefit if they again if they play their cards right off of what the Rams did. Cause even though Jared even though Jared Golf is an average quarterback at best. You have all that draft capital, all that additional draft capital. And for a team like the Detroit Lions, that's just a dysfunctional mess. This is a big, this is a pretty big move right there. It's a pretty big move for them. But for the Rams, yes, it could be looking good now for the present, but in the future, it can definitely hurt them. And we thought, and we said the same thing with Jalen Ramsey, but now you do it with Matthew Stafford. We'll see. We'll see.